everybody. I have been putting off making this video for a long time. I'll get into that a little later on in this video. With the weather being what it is this winter in California, I have found myself with some extra time. I'm sure it's nothing compared to what most of you are used to, but it's pretty windy outside. I think we have a pretty good break in the weather right now. So I'm gonna try to hop outside and get some good shots and tell you all about this tiny stream. When I started this business, the plan was to find an Airstream food truck, but they were not easy to find. I looked the entire first year we were in business with the cart and I never found one. It started to become clear that if I wanted an Airstream, I was gonna have to have it built from the ground up. And with the regulations being as strict as they are in California, even finding one and having it custom modified to my specifications was out of the budget and out of the question. But the business was growing and there was no question that we needed to get into a bigger facility, so I kept looking for other concessions trailers. I saw an ad for a trailer just like this one and fell in love immediately. I contacted the builder to find out how I could get my hands on one. So we set a meeting to discuss all of our needs and he drew up the plans for this trailer. He was very accommodating, he met all of our needs and more. And even though the finished product was delayed considerably by COVID shutdowns, it turned out better than I could have ever dreamed. After working with the trailer for a couple of months, we realized we were going to need a better solution for our generators, so we actually contacted a welder in town who could custom fabricate this generator rack for us. And this thing has quickly become my very favorite part of this trailer. This welder slash fabricator was actually a customer who became a friend who quickly became family. After watching me struggle with these 200 pound generators, he decided he wanted to build something to make my life easier. And he came up with a solution I would have never thought of. He also hooked me up with an amazing seamstress who designed this custom cover that slides right over the top of the two generators to keep them safe and dry. We went with two 3500 Predator generators. This setup works best for us on a parallel kit so that we only have to run one power cord from the parallel kit to the trailer. This rack allows me to slide the generators out and angle the exhaust away from my customers. It also prevents the exhaust from blowing too much heat directly at the waste tank, which is located just inside the toolbox on the front of the trailer. We do have some insulation in between the tank and the front of the toolbox in that very small space so that if we needed to run the generators while moving, as long as there's enough airflow, everything would be okay. But generally, while we're parked, I'd rather be safe than sorry. The parallel kit stays connected at all times for quick setup. We also had this electric jack installed and a more adjustable tongue for better clearance while towing. People often ask me how I like these Predators and I highly recommend them. As long as you give them proper maintenance and regular oil changes, they won't let you down. And we of course keep them locked so they don't walk away. Here's the freshwater input with a little mesh screen to prevent debris from getting in. And the gray water discharge coming from the waste tank which is inside that toolbox. The waste tank is a 45 gallon polycarbonate tank and it's not quite as big as the toolbox allowing us to store the power cord jack and a couple other things up here in this top of this little box probably about time to replace that first aid kit if you didn't know they do expire i did finally get an impact wrench so i don't have to use the hand jack anymore but i think i need a bigger battery because it does have a hard time getting them down here is our power cord, still using a 30 amp adapter to connect it to 110 power. Cute little step for shorties and two more stabilizer jacks in the back. The builder chose the perfect vintage tail lights to really make the back of this come together. Coming around to the front, this shelf has locking hinges. They just snap into place. Both sides, pretty easy. And then they just collapse with a push of a button on each side and then lock back into place. And the moment you've all been waiting for, let's take a look inside. We use this storage for buns and chips and Delfield freezer, which we can use for ice cream and ice, turbo air fridge. Here's our control panel and food warmers, nice bright fluorescent lighting, some wiring here, ventilation shaft that leads to the outside and our three compartment sink. The curb allows for a little extra space up against the window for dish soap, sanitizer, utensils, things like that. Hand washing sink, paper towels, soap, our windows. This little stainless steel cart holds all of our condiments and all of our extras and usually sits outside during service. We found that service in the trailer goes much smoother and much faster with self-service condiments. 
Ketchup, mustard, mayo, and relish live outside on the cart while we have tomatoes, onions, jalapenos, and sauerkraut inside. Let's take a closer look at some of the details inside. I found these lights pretty inexpensive on Amazon. They're just a stick-on LED light strip. They're pretty easy to get set up, but they are a little delicate. You do have to be very careful with the placement that they're not stressed or pinched anywhere or they will break. The setup in this trailer is pretty simple, but it does have everything it needs to pass a health inspection. Under the three compartment sink, you can see our seven gallon electric water heater. It puts out plenty of hot water very fast. That's connected to our water pump, and here is our 30 gallon fresh water tank. All of the plumbing coming from the three compartment sink and the hand wash sink. You can see where the fresh water is piped into the hand wash sink. And this perfect little under counter storage for our trash can and our stool. In order for the service window to be at about eye level when you're standing outside, it has to be pretty low in the trailer. So we find it's easier to use this stool rather than bending at the waist all day. I'm pretty sure these were $10 at Harbor Freight. Every food truck needs their share of undercounter secured storage. So we had them put these lockable cabinets in so that we can put everything we need for service inside these cabinets and lock the doors and it's stable and secure for towing. During our busy season, we do find that they fill up fast, but we have never run out of space. Even in our refrigerator, which is pretty small, but because we choose to keep most of our drinks in there, we limit our food storage. For really large events, we would just put a large cooler out front with ice down drinks instead of keeping them in here so that we could store all the food we need. But even at some of our largest events, we've managed to store plenty of food without having to keep the drinks outside. For really hot or cold days, we do have a Dometic air conditioner with the heater option installed. But most of the time, if we need to adjust the temperature in the trailer, we can just pop this hatch open. I am of course too short to reach it by hand, so I have to use this little hook to get it open and closed. Another little extra I added was this little battery powered light. When it's dark out and the trailer is not hooked up to power, it's very difficult to see in here, so I just had this put in so I don't trip over things trying to get in and move around in the dark. This little thing also really comes in handy. I think it's like a soap caddy from a shower or something, but it's real sticky on the bottom so it doesn't move around while we're moving and I can put anything I need in there that I need to stay on the counter. And then of course these little crates are just absolute game changers. Let me show you how it works really quick. They are collapsible and interlocking. So you just pull them out and pop the sides in and they turn into a little crate and then they can slide on top of other crates or you can slide another crate on top of it so that it has a lid if you need to. And then when they're empty, you just fold them back in and slide them in anywhere. They fold totally flat and it's really nice for space saving. The last thing I felt like it was important to show is the underside of these appliances. So you can see that the freezer is not bolted to the floor, but the fridge is. And that's because the freezer is so much lighter, but we have lost a leg on the freezer to a really bumpy road. So I highly recommend bolting all of your appliances to the floor, even if they're light. And that about does it for our tour of the tiny stream. And now we come to the part of the video where I absolutely break your heart. One of the main reasons it took me so long to make this video is because the builder is no longer making these trailers. I have received so many inquiries on where I got this trailer, where it was built, and how people can contact the builder, and I have sent him so many people only for him to tell them that he cannot make these trailers anymore. During COVID, the price of steel absolutely skyrocketed, and unfortunately, that makes the cost of making this trailer more than double what it was when I paid for it making it very difficult to find buyers for such a specific product. He has since pivoted to building and modifying already running vehicles into food trucks. And I look forward to checking out his future designs. As much as I adore this trailer, I am still holding out hope that one day I will find the perfect Airstream to turn into a concessions trailer. Who knows, with the amount of knowledge I've gained over the last couple of years, I might even be able to do it myself. But the builders are out there. The most beautiful ones I've seen by far are from P&S Trailer Service in Ohio. I'll make sure to post their Instagram handle in the description. I hope you were able to find some inspiration in this video. Whether you're just getting into this business, been in it for a while, or are just dreaming, it has been the most challenging job I have ever had, but also the most rewarding. I wish you all the best on your journey, and thank you so much for following ours.